BBC Surrey Breakfast. Call James Cannon on 0370 411 1046. Text 81333. Starting your message with radio or tweet at BBC Surrey. Good morning, seven minutes past eight o'clock. Peter's been telling you this story this morning about a builder who's demanding an apology for being kept in custody for six hours for allegedly fly tipping in Hawley. Adrian Soule says that he and a colleague should never have been arrested as the person who'd contacted the police had already withdrawn her complaint. Adrian also wants his DNA taken off the police database. We were going just basically going about our job. We were looking for a tree um, that was sticking out over the road, which we needed to cut down because it was in the way. As we went up this particular road, which is a, a very small um, no-through road, we went past a, a bag on the ground... Um, looked at it, carried on, looked for the said tree. The tree we were looking for had already been cut down, so we were on our way out of the street, went back past the said bag, sort of looked at it, and went on to our next job, which was about a mile up the road. Just as we finished it, we got a call from our, our, our boss to say to return to the yard. Um, there was two police there, and I had my works file with me, which I said, you know... You can look through the work file. The reason that we're in the road was there. And they just arrested us. Didn't want to look at the file. Didn't want to talk about anything. Just and what were you actually arrested place. for then? Fly tipping. The, the, the sack that was on the ground had been fly tipped. It's a, it's a, you know the big one ton sacks that you get from the builder's yard that have rubble and. Yeah, they're sort of that. like a, a plastic skip, if you like, aren't they? Yes, that's right, yeah. So <laughs> somebody had filled this up with. Uh, well, actually half filled it with builder's rubble. And it was on the side of the road. Um, people could drive around it quite easily. And we looked at it and carried on. And we were arrested for fly tipping and for causing obstruction on the highway. Our vehicle had been reported by the, as we found out later, by, by the person that was behind us. Uh, following us down the road. And they said that they'd seen us doing it. So and, you, you've uh, complained it was false imprisonment. Yeah. The police have to act on what they're told, though, don't they? Um, yeah, they do, but they could have uh, spoken to us um, and asked us what any explanation as to why we were there. Um, but as it turned out, the, the, um, the, the person that had reported us doing it withdrew their statement before we were actually arrested. So there actually wasn't anything to answer to. One, that we hadn't done it, and two, she hadn't seen us doing it anyway. They would take, They took all of our details, including fingerprints and DNA. For myself, I've, I've never had a police record in my entire life, so I was, I was very, very taken aback by all of this, <clears throat> what I would say strong-handed method of hauling somebody in for doing their job, you know, taking their DNA, and, and then they put us in separate cells. And it, they... You were released without charge, though? Yes, but that was after sitting in a cell and not talking to anybody for six hours. So you're still annoyed about it? Yeah, absolutely. What, yeah. Do, you, what do you want to happen? I want an apology, um, and also that my DNA and, and fingerprints and everything is all taken off the record, because... Not having ever done anything wrong, never had to have you know police arrest me or anything like that. It was it was a shock, and and all we were doing was going about our job, and and the police, I feel heavy-handedly, came along, didn't want to ask any questions at all, and just arrested us there and then in in our actual office at work in front of our boss, and it was just. Very heavy-handed. That's a story from Adrian Soul. How would you feel if you were in the same position? Or has that happened to you? Surrey Police didn't want to do an interview today. They have emailed us this statement. Surrey Police received an allegation of fly-tipping in Langshot, Hawley, from a local resident at around 8.30 on March the 26th. Officers attended the location where a builder's sack had been left in the road. Acting on information provided, a 19-year-old man and a 58-year-old man were arrested on suspicion of abandoning items on a road and causing a danger to road users. Both were taken into custody where they were interviewed in relation to the allegation. They were subsequently 
quietly later released with no further action taken. The Forces Professional Standards Department has now received a complaint relating to this matter and an investigation is being carried out. Whilst this process is ongoing, it would be inappropriate to comment further on this particular case at the current time. Officers from PSD will be in touch directly with the complainant who will be informed of the outcome in due course. That's what Surrey Police have said. Jack Hart is from the Freedom Association, which is a centre-right liberty group, campaigns for individual freedoms. Good morning. Good morning. Um, What information and, and samples can police actually take from an individual? Well, when someone's arrested, the police can take things like DNA, they can take fingerprints, and they can all be registered onto the police national database. And what happens to that data once the person has either been charged or, as in the case of Adrian, released without charge? Well, technically, under the Protection of Freedoms Act, it should be destroyed unless a chief constable has a valid reason because the offence was either violent or of a sexual nature. And does that actually happen? No, not at all. Uh, Basically, very few forces are actually able to separate their data between convicted and unconvicted. So it sort of just sits on this system. Hopefully, it will be deleted at some point, but it's almost impossible for the police to work out. So can you and I in any way try and find out what information the police do hold about us? Yeah, you're more than entitled to write to your chief constable and ask them to let you know what's on, what they hold on you and also to delete any information they have got if you, ha- you know, haven't been convicted. And how do you know that that's actually done? That's the difficult thing. You're not entirely able to check whether this has been done. It's sort of you're relying on the goodwill of the chief constable to ensure it's deleted. Technically, under the law, they should, but it's going to cost the police about £8 million at least to get the system ready so they can delete this information. Right, so the process at the moment, in Adrian's case, if he writes to the chief constable and says to her, please, I want to know what information I've had, and then does he then write and say, can you please get rid of it all? Yeah, that, that would be the best process to follow. It's, it's, it's a sim- you know, the system should be simple. It works very well in Scotland, where anyone that is innocent, their, you know, their details are automatically deleted. So that is the system we're meant to have in England and Wales. It just isn't in operation yet. Do we have anything to fear, though, from the police actually holding info on us? Well, I think, you know, if you're innocent, there is no need or right for the police to hold your information. When you've done nothing wrong, why should you be put on a large national database? Okay, interesting stuff. Thank you, Jack. It's from the Freedom Association. It is BBC Surrey. It's James Cannon here.